Hello and welcome to a Demon's Fall production of The Fields of Ilian, Episode 3, Fear in an Infinite Dark. Alright, so a recap of last time, you, Malkor, after surviving a horrific calamity that left uh, everybody you knew dead, you wandered off into the woods and met Ralph. Hi, I'm Ralph! And uh, you... What? <laughs> and you and he kind of became buds. You learned that you can store creatures inside the gauntlet, so voom, Ralph is now your new best friend. Uh, throughout the rest of the day, you met a, a wolf named Maximus, who you haven't talked to yet, but you saved his life, staring him inside the gauntlet to cure him from uh, something from which you really didn't parse out. And then as the day came to a close and darkness fell, you came face to face with a two-headed horrible beastie known as a death dog. As you fought this death dog, uh, it attacked you viciously doing, you know, that eight points of damage, knocking you down onto the ground. And out of the gauntlet in a moment of pure terror emerged Maximus the wolf, it who bit that death dog right in the jaws. So now, Maximus the wolf is snarling with his jaws latched firmly around the death dog's throat. On the ground, you, Melkor, are transfixed by the sudden and vicious fight, bleeding from the death dog's first attack and shaking with fear. You're up in the turn order, so it's you, the death dog, and Maximus. What do you do? Cool. I am going to pull out that crappy little dagger that I have <laughs> yeah. and attempt to stab the death dog. Okay, you do get sneak attack damage because Maximus counts as an ally. Cool. Um, I rolled a total of 20. It's pretty good. Its AC is kind of crap. That hits. <laughs> nice. So you're, I'm gonna, so you're kind of prone on the ground. So you're going to get up, probably using half your movement, and uh, you're going to have to sort of maybe move to the side to get around Maximus. Does that sound good to you? Yeah, that's fine. All right, so roll your damage. Fifteen. Fifteen. Jeez, okay. Yeah, I rolled a four, a five, a three, plus three. Holy crap. <laughs> See, yeah. this is why I didn't... I knew that you were fine fighting this death dog. <laughs> Rogues, man. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. Oh, wow. Especially now that you have allies. All right, hang on, I've got to do some quick math. Blah, blah, blah. Da, da, da. What? Eh? Well, bam. All right. So you sort of get to your feet. You scramble up. You pull out your dagger in with this inhuman sort of boyish, like, oh! like you. it's more scared yell than, like, angry <laughs> yell. Yeah, there we go. Uh, you, like, lunge forward and bury your knife or your dagger in this death dog's flank as it <laughs> sort of roars and... Um... Cool. And when he turns to snarl at me, exposing his neck, Maximus is going to take a bite out of him? Um, or is that how, like, how's the initiative work for Maximus? Well, he's going third. He rode third in the order. So it's you, so that then would the be death dog. Yeah, it's a death dog turn now. Because it's you, then the death dog, and then okay. Maximus. I understand. Um, because the de because Maximus uh, has him kind of locked up, the death dog's first attack is going to be, one of its heads is going to, one of its big paws is going to kind of get up and try to, like, push Maximus off. Maximus off while the the bite kind of comes snapping in. And let's see here. Um, what's Maximus's AC? It's actually kind of... Uh, 13. 13? Let me do some quick. 8 in... Ooh. First bite rolled a 12. So it's going to try to come in with a second one. See, it doesn't matter what I roll. I roll crap. Uh, all right, that's a 17. That'll hit. All right. So the first, it pushes Maximus off of it, and then huff, huff, as it comes in with two bite attacks, Maximus is going to take uh, six points of piercing damage. Cool. And have to make a constitution saving throw. Oh, balls. Uh, 16? That'll do it. Yeah. Uh, you're not poisoned. Congratulations. Oh, good. Um... The death dog sort of like crouches down, sort of shifting its body so that one head is looking at you and the other head is looking at Maximus and it like <sighs> just snarls. Maximus is up. Cool. He's got pack tactics because we're both within five feet, so it's at advantage. Yes, it does. Ha -ha! He's going to attempt to bite it. The first one is a natural. Ooh, that's good. Natural 19 that'll plus four is 23. Jeez. Yeah, that'll do it. And then 2d4 plus two. So four 
plus one is five, plus two is seven. Seven. Nice. You were destroying this thing. I love it. Uh, and then you need to succeed on a strength saving throw. Oh, yeah, I do. I remember reading about that. Uh, ooh, that's bad. That's a 10. That is a fail. What's the DC on that? 11. Dang. <laughs> I'm knocked prone, right? Yes, you are now. Well, according to your typing, it's knocked brown. But yes, oh. you are knocked prone. Whoops. Um, all right, so Maximus just sort of falls back on his paws for a second, does like a, you know, like a sort of a boxer stutter step thing, and then lunges in again, and as his throat, or as his jaws wrap around the death dog's throat, he like pivots his body and <laughs> slams the death dog onto the ground, and then and now, it is your turn. Alright, cool. Now Melkor also gets advantage because he's attacking a prone, a prone, prone opponent. Yes, that's true. That's cool. So, advantage. Can't get much better than... Well, I rolled an 18 and a 17. Uh, so 18 yeah. plus 5 is 23. That will hit, as it were. And then 1 plus 4 is 5, plus 1 is 6, plus 3 is 9. 9? Nine? 9 points of the piercing damage. Alright, the death dog um, is not looking great at all as you sort of, you got in, but since it's prone, you're able to sort of like pull yourself up over its body and just bury your knife like right in the in the space between its two heads and you're sort of like right there um it being prone on its turn is going to stand up i'm gonna need you to make like a dexterity saving throw i like these dice um 23 nice so you are now like it stands up and you manage to keep your grip on the dagger you're, you're riding on its back and it's going to sort of attempt to, since it's it's just in a rage and near death and sort of just uh, freaking out, as it were, just panting and slobbering and full of, you know, feral rage, it's going to just leap again at Maximus with a 18. That hits. All right. So it's going to do... Ba -ba -ba -ba. Four points of damage. Alrighty. And then attempt to throw you off. So make a strength saving throw. Aw, oh, balls. That's a four. That's a four. Uh, Alright, you were trying to beat... Uh, it was like a strength contest roll. Kind of deal, he rolled yeah. an 18. So he's going to throw you... Uh, sort of like he's going to sort of roll his... Like, lunge forward, I guess, since he's a giant four-legged beast. And sort of throw you off... Um, and as he does that, he's going to make a quick little bite attack as you fly by. Oh, that's crap. That's a 12. That misses. Uh -huh. And so, <clears throat> his jaws sort of like just miss you as you go tumbling over and you land on the ground. Um, you succeed in your deck save. Make another deck save real quick. 12. Ooh, I'm going to say that you hit the ground kind of hard and you roll and are knocked prone. Maximus' turn. Cool. Maximus is going to try to bite him again. Am I still within five feet? Uh, you... Yeah, he didn't throw you all that far. Cool, so... He didn't go, like, sailing through the air. Oh, you just sort of, uh, like... Uh, with advantage, that's a 12. I mean, his armor class is 12, so that hits. Hey! Suck it. These things are channels rating one. They would really wreck, like, just you at level one, but... Uh, seven points of damage again. All right, so because the, the death dog uh, has, like, turned and thrown you, in that moment, Maximus, like, lowers himself to the ground and with, like, uh, just silently leaps, sort of paws crashing into the death dog's uh, flank. And then he, like, pushes the death dog to the ground, like, leaps over and just sinks his jaws and teeth into the death dog's neck and <laughs> snaps it. Hey, you're dead. Yes, he is. Maximus releases his jaws and sort of steps back and sits down, silently staring at you, waiting. I'm just going to keep stabbing the death dog. Just, like, freaking out, like, ah! Stab, 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 stab. All right. I like it. Um, because I'm not enjoying whatever's going on. All right, Maximus is just sort of sitting there. 
uh, Proud Wolf style, just staring at you, uh, waiting. Make a wisdom saving throw. Uh, this, nope, that's intelligence, so plus two is 15. Why would a wisdom saving throw have intelligence? Because so I was looking and I was like, "Oh, proficiency." Nope, that's intelligence. Oh, that makes more sense. I was, you thought you were thinking like half out loud. And I got confused. I'm sorry. Oh yeah. Um. All right. So wait, you were sixteen. Fifteen. Fifteen. Okay. So after not very a long time, you sort of become aware of yourself, uh, and I'll kind of leave it up to you if you want to keep like freaking out and stabbing it, or if you like are like, "Oh." Um, I'll calm down, and then. I need. I want to double check one thing on a thing. So bear with me. I want to see if a thing is still doing things. Nope. I will say that is well. It, so as I'm coming close to like totally losing it, mm -hmm. uh, the dancing lights that I had dancing around. Mm -hmm. So that only lasts a minute. Okay. So that kind of just pops away. Okay. Just and then the, the change in light is what snaps me out of freaking out. All right. As you sort of become aware of yourself, your, your dagger again just like up to its hilt in the death dog's body, uh, you become aware sort of the, the faint glow, green glowing of your gauntlet and the tether that connects it to Maximus is like the it sort of catch, like it, it's the first thing you see and it brings you back down and you're like... <sighs> And the only source of light in the entire woods now is your arm as it glows green and the tether on the ground that connects itself to Maximus. Um, get in the glove. So the gauntlet glows even brighter, just... And the tether that connects to Maximus does as well. And in a moment, he's translucent in green and right back into the gauntlet. And you hear Albin's sigh just... Oh, that was close. What is happening? What was that? I was... I don't know. It was huge, though. I don't like it. Yeah. Well, he must... No, I'm tired. You, sh you should get away from its... from its... body. Mel, you don't want to be near that thing. No, no, I do not. Uh, so I'm gonna... take my dagger... Um, kind of like rub it on the ground and attempt to like clean some of the shit off of it. Okay. Uh, except I'm a child, so I don't say that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm gonna clean off the dagger a little bit, and then, um, Al, do you know any place where we could rest? Or like that's not near here, someplace safe maybe. I don't know my way around all that well at all. You just have to find, just follow the road for a bit, maybe, and uh, and we can just camp right off the road. Okay. Um, where's Ralphie right now? In the gauntlet. Um, hey, Ralphie? Hey, what's up? You hear the voice, cool. like, coming from the gauntlet. Like, it's audible. Like, you don't hear it in your head, you hear it from the actual gauntlet. Cool. Um, do you know of any good, um, as I'm... I'm going to start walking again in the same direction that we were headed before the death of. Um, do you know... Make a perception check. Oh, balls. Ooh, that's good. That's good, that's good, that's good. Uh, plus four is 23. That is pretty good. You're able to sort of uh, let your eyes have sort of adjusted to the dark as you've sort of sat there and, like, tried to figure things out. And you've been able to... Um, remember in this moment of panic even still where you were going and you're now uh it's kind of it's hard to see the road but you're using the trees as your your guideline and you're you're able to follow it cool hey, ralphie you're you've you know what's wild do you know if there's any place where you can like you know sleep i uh, we'd have to walk all the way back to the shrine i don't even remember where that is though um, no, I guess not. It's, the shrine's the only thing I can remember. Do you know how far away that is? Not anymore. It's dark, man. Also, I'm in here. I can't see anything. 
Get out of the glove. And the green tether just... And Ralphie emerges in a translucent burst of green light. Ah, uh, you know? His head turns back and forth. Uh, yep. Uh, roll a perception check. <laughs> For Ralphie? Yeah. Oof. That that is a that is an amazing seven. Oh, he's oh, he like scurries up to one side. He's like ah, and like back, eh. and then like along the road a little bit. Well, yeah, no, I I don't know, I got nothing. I um, I don't remember. Everything's so unreal, disoriented, man. Been in that glove, and then I'm here, and uh, like well, it. we're headed that direction, and I point. As we're obviously still walking. Um, so, yeah. Let's, I don't know. Keep People going, I guess. People find it in the dark? It was hard enough to find during the day. I don't know. Let's just keep going. And we keep walking. Alright, which direction? Back the way you came? Trying to find uh, no. the... Uh, further along the path away from the death dog. So in the same direction we were... Going before the death. Okay, so not anywhere close to where the shrine was. Gotcha. Nope. <laughs> okay. Just making sure. Um, Subconsciously, Melkor is like, I don't want to go back there. Yeah, it makes sense. Um, so you're going to... I'm just going to say, you you walk for a bit uh, along the road, and eventually you just get tired. So make a constitution saving throw. 17. Mm. You you stop for a bit and you're sort of like bent over, hands on the knees, like <sighs> you know, breathing a little bit. You're tired. You're exhausted. You're a little just everything sore still because it was sore uh, from the moment after the calamity, and you're just even worse now after being attacked by that death dog. So you are you are just wiped out, and you have not found anything. You're just on a road in the middle of the woods. Um, cool. So, is the glove, so Ralphie's still out. Is the glove glowing that he, now that he's out? Yeah, it's like a, it would probably give you dark vision up to like five feet. So you're in, it's like no better, it's like worse than a candle or no better than a candle. Okay. But it's like, it's still glowing. Like if he, is he, if, if he is out, in the glove. Glowing. If he's if they're in the glove, is it glowing? No. Cool. Um, Ralphie, get back in the glove. So again, translucent green as he returns into the gauntlet, and the light flips out. Cool. Um, I'm just gonna walk like to the edge of whatever this path is, mm -hmm. and just try to find a comfortable spot to lay down up against the tree. Cause okay. I got nothing else. Um, make a perception check. We'll just go with that for now. Doing a lot of those, but cool. And so I remembered since I'm I'm supposed to be at disadvantage, so that one was at disadvantage. Got you. Oh yeah, you're exhausted, aren't you? Because I have that one level of exhaustion. Yeah. Yeah, you do. So perception twelve. You do not find the most comfortable tree ever. You just sort of you're tired and you're like, I don't even care anymore. And <laughs> this will work. Yeah, and you slump down with your back against the tree, and you like sort of slide, like you just, and your back like itches up against the bark or scratches up against the bark, uh, and you just sort of your head lulls off to one side, and you're like, oh, "What a day!" Um, well, today sucked. <laughs> Finally, after some time of of your brain just being very awake and aware of everything you've been through the past, uh, like. 36 hours even yeah. Um, <laughs> you yeah. you fall into a restless sleep you you will uh your point of exhaustion will leave you when you wake and um you'll you'll get your full hit points back as well maximus being in the gauntlet and resting but uh it's not the best sleep you've ever had by far it's, um, kind, of, it's kind of the worst it's real bad. i'm willing to bet he's used to pretty shitty experiences when sleeping because of just he hasn't had a home. Yeah, true. I could get behind but that. It's not great. Yeah. Okay. 
Cool. So you're sleeping. Make a general d20 roll. One. <laughs> oh, gosh. You're really lucky that that actually didn't really matter all that much. Um, so eventually you wake. Your eyes f flash open and darkness hangs over the woods. Like natural darkness? Mm, I mean, you're 11. Make a, You don't really know. It seems pretty natural. Works for me. I'm just going to go back to bed. All right, so you <laughs> go back to bed. You sleep for some time more, uh, and eventually you wake. Ugh, you open your eyes. It's still dark. Is there any way I can tell how long I've been asleep? Uh, yeah, do one more perception check for me. Still at disadvantage? No, you're, you've been asleep for, uh, you're been asleep for at least eight hours. You're, uh, okay, so your exhaustion 12. is gone. Twelve. Uh, you get the feeling that it's daytime and you're kind of using your, your stomach, right? As that barometer, like you're hungry, but you're not so hungry that you slept for like the whole day, right? Like you do have very limited food supplies, etc. but you are, you are a, a like relatively normal amount of hungry that you would have been had you like if you had gone to bed because you went to bed only a little bit after sun after sundown right uh huh and you've woken up and you like this is the kind of hungry you'd be if it were noon or one oh and, and it's I dark? did check yeah it's completely dark and I did check uh we did say that it was spring so you would have gone to bed around probably like it would have been gotten it would have gotten dark around eight or nine. Or seven right. or eight, I guess, depending on how late into spring we are. So I, I open my eyes and it's dark. Yeah. Uh, I'm, and I'm going to cast... It's, it only lasts a minute, but I'm going to cast Dancing Lights. Okay, it's just... The... So four, like, little globs of light just go... Bloop, 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 bloop. Do you want them? You can, like, have them orbit you, right? Is that a thing? Yeah, they, they got, yeah, I got, like, some crazy range with them, too, and stuff like that, yeah. if I wanted to do other things. Um, so, for now, I'm just going to, like, send them out, maybe, like, 20 or 30 feet in, like, four, front, back, left, and right, okay. and see if there's anything around me and find the path again. All right, cool. So, you find that path, um, and, you know, you look up and you look around... And, I mean, you can find it and you can start walking on it if you want. That is what I would like to do. Right. And I'm going to try to find food. I don't know how I'm going to find food, but I'm going to try. Okay. Make an uh, investigation check. Why is it rolling that number so often? You got loaded dice? Am I going to have to come over there and take them from you? Like the, No, like the last six rolls have all been eight. That sounds like my life. <laughs> so, so that's a 13. It's a 13. Uh, it's real dark. It's actually kind of darker than you remember it being the night before. Uh, you don't. You just see the, the, the dim shapes of trees twisting and arcing out into the night. And it's like, it, to your childhood mind, it seems endless. All right. Well, um... As I'm walking, since I can't find any, mm -hmm. um, do I know that the wolf's name is Maximus yet? No, you haven't talked to him. So, without pulling him out of the, anything out of the glove, um, hey Ralphie. Yeah. I know I can. Well, I guess no. Never mind. This is a question, for Al. Yes. Hey Al. What? What? What's going on? So. I can talk to the little thing, Ralphie, right? Yes. Can I talk to the wolf, too? Of course. Hey, wolf? And there's silence for a moment. And then with a bit of a, with a, bit of a sigh, just... <clears throat> oh, doing deep voices is harder when you're sick. My gosh, that doesn't even make sense. <laughs> yes, child. Ooh. Um... Can you help me find food? I suppose I could take a look. If you bring Maybe me take out. a whiff? 
cool. Come on out of the glove. And the, the green tether, the, the gauntlet begins to glow. The tether snakes its way out. And uh, appearing out of that translucent green light is the wolf. And he looks quite majestic even in the dark. His eyes sort of glowing. Cool. So, can you smell any food or anything like that? Because I got nothing. Uh, have Maximus make a perception check. Cool. He gets advantage because he's got it smelling. Yes, he does. Which, that's better. Uh, 16. 16. He sort of stands up, shakes his shoulders, sort of in his whole body, and the fur, you know, shifts, and he lifts his nose to the air and inhales deeply. Sits for a bit. You got anything? No. There's something. He sort of turns and sniffs the air again. And his body sort of rotates so that he's kind of along the road, the path that you've been taking. There's something that off in the distance there. Smells in... like smoke. In which direction? Along the road. In the way that we're traveling? Yes. Cool. Let's go. Lead the way, Wolfie. All right, so the two of you start off glowing uh, sort of gently. Um, you know, in, in the light that... Hmm, I'm not sure. Jeez, Alexa, shut up. <laughs> I didn't even Loser. say your name. Oh, man. I forgot. I keep forgetting that she's there. <laughs> Alexa, um, play Careless Whisper. I have headphones on. Damn it. <laughs> I don't even remember what I was doing. You guys are walking. Yeah, sorry. As the two of you walk uh, through the woods. Dang it, my brain's all over the place. I'm too sick for this crap. As you as you walk through the woods, you uh, you want to walk besides uh, the wolf here, or do you want him to be like leading? Remember, he only has 15 feet of, of space on you right now. Um. Right. I'll be like... Next to and behind a little bit. Okay, so like you're, you're, you could basically reach your hand out and touch his flank? Yeah. All right, so as the two of you walk on the wolf leads, uh, you go for what feels like several hours, but then in this moment, and and your lights sort of, again, um, how much how much light do those... I'm just going to sense the cantrip and say so you keep casting it. How much light do you get uh, from... Um, it's four, like, torch lights kind of thing. Okay. And then I can clump them all up into one thing. You should probably get, uh, what, like 30 so, feet of distance, maybe? So, yeah, I can get 30 feet off of one. Um, let's see. Um, each light sheds dim light in a 10-foot radius. As a bonus action, I can move the lights up to 60 feet to a new spot within range. The light must be within 20 feet of another light, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to say there's... Me, and then about, and then 10 feet in front of me, and 10 feet in front of that, 10 feet in front of that, 10 feet in front of that. All right, so you've got, like, almost a runway of light for you. Yeah. All right, cool. That's a sweet little oh, scene. Shifting as I walk. Yeah. So with that, as you go, you sort of see it then before you come across it, but the tree line ends, and after what feels like several hours of walking, you emerge from the woods to an open road that winds its way through these just at what seems like an endless bit of hill and you can see off in the distance in the night like even um even though it's pitch black no moon no stars no nothing right but you can see uh that it's just rolling hills think new zealand if you want it like it's just hills upon hills upon hills Ooh. the hills seem to roll on forever so with the forest behind you in utter darkness all around it is hard to imagine where the rising and falling mounds of dirt and grass could end you trudge forward hunger growing in your stomach what do you do? So, what are you thinking, feeling? Is there anyone you want to talk to? Hey, Wolfie? Yes? Are we getting any closer to that smell of smoke? <laughs> yes, I think so. Lead on. As as you walk, he sort of turns to you and he stops for a second and says, What is your name, boy? Melkor. Melkor. I am Maximus. And he sort of like, his body shakes and his head like reaches up towards the sky. It is a pleasure to meet you. Thanks! 
So about that smoke, do you think there's food? Could be. It smells just like a simple fire or three or more. He sort of sniffs the air again. Ugh, it's a bit of a ways off, though. Comparatively, how big am I to Maximus? I mean, wolves are, I believe, medium in size? I have to check. Where are wolves in the manual? Do I know? Probably not. I saw them earlier. I, I know that they're, I know they're like size, like size category wise, they're medium. Yeah. And I'm technically also medium. But what I'm asking is, is the size different, the size differential enough where if I wanted to, and Maximus would let me, I could just hitch a ride. Probably not. I mean, you are 11 and a boy, so you're not a, like your full dragonborn size. But, yeah. um, nah. Balls. Okay. That's fine. All right, cool. So, as you slide along... Oh, what? What? I didn't hear what you said. What? Onward and upward, friends. Onward and upward, friends. All right, as you go, uh, make a perception check. Nah, balls. That's a three plus four. Seven. All right, up in the distance, sort of, uh, and a place you can't really see, but you, you see this, if nothing else, just a flash of light, right? And your senses have been dulled by the two days of just utter crap and cataclysm, and, and you don't see anything else, but you do see this flash off in the distance. Ooh! Uh, is it in the same direction as the smell of smoke? Uh, generally, not like... It's off the road, right? But yeah. it's it's in the same general direction. It's just like off in the distance on the, on what would be the horizon if there was any light at all. Cool. So let's head that way because I am easily distracted. You want to head right towards the light? Yeah. As you sort of shift off the path and start going, Maximus stops and goes, whoop, whoop, Melkor, where are you going? And and you hear Al go, Mel, I don't know if it's a good idea to leave the road. Yeah, but the light, though. Light doesn't promise good things. I mean, but if there was light, that means there was probably people. And if there's people, that means there was food. And I'm hungry. Are you going to put those orbs of light away? But then I can't see. You you remember what, what Ralphie said, right? No. <sighs> Also, point of order, Dave remembers, but... I'm no, I, I know. <laughs> I'm good with it. I'm good Perfect. With it. <laughs> Ralphie just pipes up. Hey, uh, hey, hey, Mel. Um, if someone catches you with those orbs, they're, they're gonna throw you in jail, remember? They're just gonna, they're just gonna kidnap you and throw you in a tower for the rest of your life, and you're as never gonna see your daddy. You're just gonna be there forever and ever and ever. As soon as he says jail, the lights go out. Just... I don't wanna go to... Oh, that was Ralphie's voice. I don't know how I pulled that off. I don't... <laughs> uh, I don't want to go to jail. Jail and, sounds awful. And then, and as, as you say that, you become then aware of, like, the glowing light of your gauntlet. Stop! Uh, I'll make that stop! I... Make a wisdom saving throw. Oh, balls. Oof. <laughs> Oof. Eight. Eight. You... Like, when you say that, you're just, like, so full of determination, and you're just glaring down at the gauntlet, and you, f like, feel this weird pushback in your mind, but then you're, like, you go out, you, you and, the like, the tether fades for a second, and the gauntlet goes, Maximus is still out, but the light fades, and then pff, snaps back on, and you take... Ah, oh, balls. Three points of psychic damage. Ah! Ow, why'd you do that? I, I didn't you you can't just there are rules to this mal you gotta be careful all right well how do i make it not light up you gotta put them back in the gauntlet all right maximus get back in the glove Zvoom, and he zips back inside and then utter darkness everywhere and at this point because you had been used to the light of the orbs and uh, even of the gauntlet you just can't see anything well great now i can't see anything First you tell me I can't have light, and now I'm blind. What do you want me to do? 
I really don't want to spend the rest of my life in a wizard tower. Like, you're great and all, Mel, but, uh, that's just a bad look. I don't know what that's supposed to mean. I can't look anywhere. Hey, you can follow the road, though, right? I mean, if, or also, if you just walk straight, you might get to that light. I don't know, you're, you're still facing the same direction. But you said not to go to the light. Well, yeah. Well, no, that was, that was, that was, uh, I didn't want you to go to the light with the light, you know? Yeah, sure. That's what everyone to do, Mel. I was just trying to make sure I, I don't want to be in a wizard tower. I don't place this. I don't know. I don't, I don't want to go back. I don't, I don't. <laughs> oh, man. I'm like, I'm just going to like cross my arms in like a hump. Mm -hmm. Like a 11 year old throwing a tantrum. Excellent. And just kind of, and like, just stay silent and start walking forward, just blindly into the dark. Are you trying to follow the road or are you just walking towards where that flash of light was? Walking towards where that flash of light was, because screw them. <laughs> Excellent. Alright, so a few minutes later, maybe, or more, Melkor doesn't really know, uh, somewhere on top of a nearby hill, you see an orb of light burst into existence, and it creates a silhouette that seems larger than life to your child eyes. The light flickers out, splitting into a dozen or so threads that dart off into the darkness. What do you do? Scream. <laughs> Your scream uh, is then merged with what seems like an endless echo of broken hearts, and you see pouring from all sides like ghostly ants the translucent figures of men and women just sort of like rushing in on the just all around you. Like you become aware of them at a distance, and then they get closer and closer and closer, and then <laughs> rush by you. Something cold pushes through you as you become aware of the ghost, uh, like, as a man with a crushed helm just walks straight through you. In the light of a thousand spirits, you see the figure again, standing on top of the hill, left arm held high. As the spirits come upon the dark silhouette, they become stretched, darting up into the air into the outstretched palm of this figure. Make a constitution saving throw. Oh, shit. Natural 20. I switched dice. <laughs> On a natural 20 or a successful save, Melkor will witness the following events. Ah, shit. <laughs> oh, man. That's exciting. The souls pour into the outstretched palm. You hear Albin gasp, like, oh, in horror. And in that moment, the figure turns. You are unsure if it can see you, though how it could possibly miss you. At this point, in the light of all these thousand tortured souls is beyond you. Time seems screaming. to speed up. The wind becomes frantic as the souls are taken up in a moment, rushed forward by some invisible force. In an instant, all is dark again. Then, a flash of dark purple light. And silence reigns before you pass out from fear and exhaustion. When you wake, the darkness is gone, replaced by the bright orange and purple rays of the setting sun. Say that last bit again. So, uh, when you wake, right, because you've passed out, uh, yeah. darkness is gone. And cool. it has been replaced by the bright orange and purple rays of a setting sun. Ralphie, I'm sorry, but what the shit just happened? Uh, you know, I don't have a fucking clue. <laughs> That's out of character, sorry. That's fine. <laughs> so, um... That was in character, so it's fine. Perfect. Ralph swears see... way more than I do. Perfect. Can I see up that, mount, up that like, hill where the guy was? Um, make an investigation check. What the fuck? Eight! I just well, feel like I'm the dice know you're playing an 11 year old boy. You have no idea which hill it was on. You're just, there's lots of hills. This is the New Zealand vibe, right? So you're just like, is it yeah. that one? Is it that one? Is it that one? And you're just like turning around, spinning in circles, like, ah, you don't know. What the shit? Uh, so I'm going to pull out my dagger. Okay. And just hold it. Because that was terrifying. And this makes me feel safe. <laughs> and I think this is still the right direction and i'm just gonna keep walking okay and just humming to myself going what the shit what the shit perfect um 
Make a perception check one more time. That's better. 20. Nice. Uh, yeah, 20. All right, good. So you're just like singing your little tune, like just glaring at the dagger in her hand and then looking up and then glaring, like stopping and spinning around, like <laughs> just super paranoid. Just like I step on a stick, the stick cracks, and then I scream and turn and stab the air. Yeah, exactly. And But after a while, you like you just like look up in one of your spastic moments, and you see off in the distance, like, rising up from behind a hill, uh, smoke. I take off running for the smoke. All right, you run like, for, like... All-out sprint. You, you all-out sprint for about 30 seconds, and then you're out of breath. <laughs> Bad idea. I'm just gonna... I'm gonna walk. It'll be great. I can do this. Still, like, clutching the dagger, holding it at my chest. Just, oh, I can do this. Just keep walking forward. All right, awesome. Uh, after probably, like, half an hour of walking, you are closer. Uh, Why is this happening to me? <laughs> and you can see... Now I'm hungry! More smoke rising, and you, like... Uh, it reminds you a bit of campfires from uh, the army camp, right? Like you get that sort of vibe because they're they're tucked behind like these hills. So after half an hour you've like walked up one hill and down it and then back up another one and like the smoke is It'll be on the other enough. side of this hill. It'll be there. It's and, this hill. And it's not. Yet. <laughs> uh but you are getting closer cuz you've like more you can now see more smoke uh it, I mean these it's it's high. Like there's it's it's all it's a it's a big deal. Just it's also stark, so like it's clear blue. Sk well, it was sunset, so uh, actually, I'd say at this point, it's about dark enough that like the you don't see anything anymore. Cool. I'm just gonna keep on walking. All right. Um, I wish I had my lights, but I don't wanna go to jail. I'm gonna keep on walking so I can get food and not die. All right, make a Constitution saving throw. Well, shit. Ha <laughs> <laughs> ha! Natural twenty. Dang it! Foiled again. No, so you're just ridiculously hungry, and and you've sort of lost your visual landmark. So, mm, I I think uh you really want to just like sit down on the ground and pass out, but if he wants to keep like walking through the night, up to you. This is one full day, no food, no water. I know, and I hate it. Hold on, I'm going to roll for this. Okay. I'm going to roll a d6. On odds, I sleep. Evens, I keep going. All right. It's a two, so I keep on going. All right, so you keep on walking. After I'm going to get some food. I'm going to get some food. After what seems like forever to your 11-year-old brain, uh, you like, you like come up on this hill and you look and you're like oh my gosh and you see tucked like in this weird valley between these three hills probably still a ways off at this point but very visible in the darkness a little village of houses um with uh i mean you can't really see chimneys but uh, for me to you they got chimneys cool and there's just like these little boxes of light just peppered all over the valley i see it I rolled for this too to see what I was gonna do because this is funnier. It's funnier this way. Uh, I use the same logic. Uh, ev odds. Okay. I stop. Evens. I keep going, and I roll the three. So I'm gonna see it, get so excited, and then just pass out. <laughs> All right, you just and you slump onto the ground, um, <laughs> <laughs> just exhausted and yeah, just straight exhaustion. Just I found food. <laughs> Perfect. All right. Um, you wake to the someone like shaking you. <laughs> oh, whoa! Yes. Oh, easy, easy there, child. Easy. I'm and gonna look. I'm gonna look around, grab my dagger, and be like, "What's going on? Where am I?" Make a wisdom saving throw. Ah, oh, balls. <laughs> 
Uh, 17. All right, you're not going to stab him. <laughs> um, you just, you, like, scramble up and you push the stain. Out of curiosity, thing. what was the DC for that? 15. <laughs> Good. So, um, you just wheel around and you push this, like, you can't really see and your arms are flailing and all this other jazz, and you you push the arm off, and you like look back, and you spin around. You just see this this uh, middle aged, maybe like mid thirties, early forties, so a middle aged for fantasy setting, I guess. Like not super old, but you know, this guy with uh, relatively normal brown hair in a general tunic and trousers, just sort of staring at you. His arms up, like a look of concern on his face, and he's like, "Are are you are you okay? I'm hungry." He sort of looks you up and down. Well, that's a start. Did what? How did you get here? You know. See, this is a very important moment because now we have to figure out how sassy Belcor is. I feel like I feel like he's way too tired and exhausted and starving to be as sassy as he might be later. That's fair. Well. I walked through the woods. It was dark. I kept walking. Couldn't see anything. And I think I passed out on a hill. Did so I guess I walked here? He sort of like raises an eyebrow and he looks very shocked. He's like, did, did you come from the, the battlefield? Do you know why everything went dark? What's happening? What's going on? Yes. No. I don't know. You... At least I think yes. His arms Maybe? sort of go limp to his thighs. You... Are you the only one left? Oh. I wasn't really on the battlefield, so I guess I didn't come. And you just hear Al's voice in your head. You walked through the whole thing. I'm going to completely ignore that. Perfect. <laughs> Luckily for you, that guy can't hear Al. Um, so... Good to know. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what's your What's your name? My name's Hungry, but you can call me Melkor. Do you okay. have any? Melkor, I'm I'm Steven. He holds out like a hand to shake, like almost compelled by general politeness. I shake his hand. Right. Well, I so I have two hands on the dagger. I very slowly take one hand off, still holding the dagger, and like cautiously shake his hand. I'm not gonna hurt you. He sort of laughs as he shakes your hand. But come on, let's get you some food. I, I came out to see if I could figure out what the heck happened last night. That was... Yesterday there were ghosts! Was, yesterday was, it was I, crazy! I was. They came all through here. Ah, oh, cool, so you saw them too, so I'm not going... No, we could hear them wailing. And uh, yeah. a few of us One last of night right climbed up on some of these hills here and, and saw them just rushing everywhere off in the distance. Things are yeah, bright. one of them walked. One of them walked through me. It was weird. What? Did, what did it feel like? I got all wet. Gross. Yeah, and I think it gave me superpowers. Cause then I. He gave you superpowers. Yeah. I would, uh... Watch this, and I try to jump and make myself and like fly, but I can't. So nothing happens. Make and we'll also make an acrobatic check. <laughs> Good. Oh, great. <laughs> five. five. So no, you... hold on, that's plus five, so twelve. Twelve? Okay. I was like, how did I roll a seven five, and end 12. up with a five? Seven plus five is twelve. Oh, okay. I rolled a seven, looked at my modifier, and said, all right, it's a plus five, so five. Oh. <laughs> my brain didn't work. It did not. That's okay. Um, so you... You, like, leap, and as a dragonborn, uh, you're, you know, um, kind of dexterous, I suppose? So, well, but, being... but also, no, that's being way too generous. So you, yeah. like, kind of I am hop, an 11-year-old. You kind of hop, and your body's like, dude, you're sore and tired, what are you doing? And you just, like, become self-aware of how much pain you're in and just fall flat on your face. <laughs> Look what I can do! <laughs> Ow! <laughs> yeah, yeah. And what is his, what is his name? Stephen. Stephen. Stephen looks down at you and he says, "Superpowers, huh?" 
they they don't work all the time. I just got them. There's still some kinks to work. He laughs and says, like, "Okay, okay, Malcor, well, let's get you some food, and maybe they work better with something yes! in your stomach." So he takes you down into this village, um, like the, he goes down the Can hill. I insight check this guy. Uh, yeah, but roll a disadvantage because you're eleven. Well, it was a natural twenty and a nineteen. So twenty-one. <laughs> twenty-one. Um, he seems pretty genuine. He kind of reminds you of the people from your hometown, where like they just live out in the middle of nowhere, and they probably he probably has like a, a there's probably a farm tucked somewhere behind a hill that he has to go work at. But because of what happened, whatever the heck happened, that he's just not caring about work at the moment. Wasn't my fault, I swear. Um, and so he seems relatively genuine. Sweet. Food, 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 food. He's, like, nervous and scared, but he's also, like, he found you, and he's very confused, and he's trying, he, like, wants to ask all these questions, but he's, like, be an adult, be an adult, don't ask the child about the horrible things, be an adult. Um, dude, Melkor's gonna end up so jaded, it's gonna be great. Yeah, I'm kind of screwing this child up, like, a lot. Like, hey, like I'm like, the one who decided to play an actual kid, it's not your fault. That's true, you could have played literally, but also... But knowing that you were playing a kid, I did sort of like You're a terrible human being. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I am. I did it on purpose. I knew what I was doing. It's more compelling this way. That's fair. <laughs> so Continue. Person. I wouldn't do this to a real human being. I might. Oh. What? What? Uh so he leads you down the hill. It takes you like fifteen minutes and your stomach's just growling and he leads you like down the hill and you come like you've merged with the main little road that leads to this town and in the the valley set by like the three main hills that that uh the village is set in like y it's like you're in a completely other world from where you started there's no mountains there's no forest there's no armies there's no nothing it's just like a little it's a little village like the town or like the village you grew up in there's these little houses with smoke coming out of them it's like people have fires going and there's just people, humans, half-elves, some dwarves, some halflings just walking around doing their thing, going about their day's work. And they see you and are like, they know where you probably came from. And they're also doing that adult thing where they're like, don't say anything. Don't say anything. Ignore the ignore the fact that the child came from turmoil. Yeah, it just, just like, they know that the, because everyone knows the war is going on. Everyone knows that the armies were close because the opposing army would have had to have come through here to get where you guys are. Um Malcor doesn't understand how maps work, so luckily I don't have to explain that. But right, like, Perfect. yeah, they they know uh, what's happening, and so even though Melkor feels suddenly insulated from all the horrible, like, uh, you know, makes sense. Also, so I've been keeping track of what spells I've six. Mm -hmm. Um, and so once I cast them, I'm aware that I can cast. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna try this and not know if it's gonna work. But I'm going to cast Message and send it into the glove to Al and be like, so... They're cool. Say again? Do you think they're cool? Am I okay here? Um, they seem genuine enough. Cool, it worked! <laughs> that was out loud. Uh, what? What worked? Steven huh? stops and looks at you for a second. Um... I flew for a little bit. It was great. You did? Well, it might have just been a weird jump on like that off of that rock. Just in the air for. Uh, oh, oh, let's get. He's just like we gotta get some food in this small child right now. You finally get to his house, which is just a quaint little, uh, kind of cabin esque looking thing. Think like cabin and ranch house set in New Zealand, um, with some steps that lead up and a little porch, and you go inside and. Uh, he apparently sort of lives by himself, but he's got the table at the fireplace, which is not going currently, and cabinets, and he's just like, you're in a home for the first time in uh, months. Look at you got chairs! <laughs> yeah, we have chairs. I haven't seen a chair in weeks? Months? How long has this been going on? Unimportant chairs! And I'm gonna run and sit on a chair at the table. Alright, he's gonna laugh at you with sort of a smile on his face. Uh, and go to the cabinets and take out some bread and take out a bowl. And he's gonna go uh, to this, like, box and pull out this 
this pot full of like broth and pour the broth into the bowl and we need some bread and some broth and a spoon and just say there you go Mel can I call you Mel do people call you Mel sometimes <clears throat> that was like I'm gonna leave that in there that was in character that was after like four quick spoonfuls of soup <laughs> All right, so you just shoveling soup down your down your throat and just tearing off bits of bread, and yeah. um, he I'm sort of stands town. he stands off in the corner and like watches you. He he's not um, he doesn't feel comfortable enough to like join you, and he doesn't want to make you feel uncomfortable and he, et cetera, et cetera. So he's just sort of um, and when you finish okay. your bowl of soup, he like brings well, you some more broth. Half, halfway through the first bowl, I'm gonna ask, um, are you hungry? No, I'm fine. I ate before I, I went out this morning. Okay, more for me. And I'm back to town on the soup. Perfect. So after time, you, you finish, and you put the you, the bread's gone. You've done maybe, like, two, three bowls of soup, and you just, like... You... And it's just, like, all over my torn-up ratty oh, shit. Yeah, it's all over I'm you. I'm an absolute mess. And also, you're, like, you know, lizard-esque, so, like... A reptilian, I suppose, is a better phrase. So, like, it's just like your scales look a little like slimy now. And he's sort of nice. Stephen kind of looks at you and he's like, "Um, would you like to wash up? Maybe get some new clothes. You're all in a rags." I mean, yes. And I'll hop off the chair and be like, "Um, hold on, I'm, I have a little like pouch. I'm gonna open it up and be like." I have some money for new clothes. No, well, all right. Don't don't worry about that. Let's let's go down to uh, the general store and see what Sarah can get for you. Cool. Thanks, Steve. Can I call you Steve? Yeah, of course. It's my name. Well, you said Stephen, but you started calling me Mel instead of Melkor, so I think Steve instead of Stephen kind of makes sense. That's true. Most people do call me Steve. I didn't even notice. Come on, nice. let's go. Let's go. Sarah will take good care of you. She's a nice lady. the store! So you guys take your walk, and, like, it's probably 8 a.m., and people are kind of out and about, and um, they are, like, some people look at your rags, and they're like, oh, my goodness. They're, they're just, they have empathy for this, this small boy who's full of rags who absolutely came from, you know, a war zone. But the kid has no idea what's going on. He's just super happy to be in this place with people. So I'm skipping down the road behind Steven. Okay. Excellent. Like, actually skipping. And he's like, Mel, you gotta, to the left, take a left. And you, would like, skip down to well, the left. And I'm, you see... I'm walking behind, uh, skipping behind him, so oh, I'm just behind him. Alright, you didn't want to go up. Alright, so he leads you through the town, and do you, like, wave at people and say hi as you go, or are you just skipping? No, I'm too focused on Steven and potential clothes. I'm not paying attention to anybody except him. Okay, cool. So... Uh, you get to the general store, it's got this big sign, it just, you know, got a, a, a symbol of, um, like, a little pouch and some needle and thread and whatnot, um, and, like, a shield is the background of all that, so it's like, we got everything. And you go inside, and, you know, there's displays, and you haven't seen a store in months, you haven't seen, like... Probably ever. I mean, did we ever decide if your family was, like... Well, poor? they were, like, or farmers, you? so, like... And you're young. You, you might. You, it's probably been a really long time. It's so probably too long for me to remember. And whenever we went, I probably never cared. Yeah, that's fair. All right. So you just like it's got you know clothing, and there's like different like wooden bins of all these different foods, and um, like on the back wall, there's some weapons, and just everywhere you look, there's something new. Like up at the desk, there's like these little wrappers of what you assume might be candy. Ooh, candy! I'm booking it towards. I'm just gonna run towards the candy. And you hear this voice call, us. Stephen? What do you what What do you got there? Who's this? I'm Melkor. Is that candy? Can I have some? Um, <laughs> sure. She takes a piece, laughing, and just gives it to you. Woo! I eat it. Stick it right in my face. It's like it's like licorice. What kind of licorice? Like black licorice, red licorice? Like black licorice from the 1950s. <laughs> it immediately goes in and just ah, ah, and she like stick out my tongue and it falls off. And she laughs. 
You said it was candy, eh? I want candy. Oh, it is, it is candy. Here, maybe you like this one better. She gives, you, she gives you, like, a lemon drop. I'm gonna, I'm gonna put it in my face, like, just contorts from sour. That's better! <laughs> Steven, where did you get this boy? And then he looks at her and she goes, oh, oh. And what's your name? My name's Melkor. Melkor, nice. To, I'm Sarah. We gotta get you some new clothes. Um, come, come here, come here. And she takes you, sort of, focuses you, because you had been like, candy. And she focuses you to the section of the store, um, where these, like, there's these, like, bins full of different, uh, colored clothing. She's like, what do you want, Mel? Um. Hold, please. Cool. Do you have anything purple? We do. Nice. She sort of guides you over to a bin that's like in the in the back. Normally, it's a little bit more expensive, right? And you see Steven sort of being like, mm, but Sarah's I'll actually make a perception check. I'm gonna fail this on purpose. You see nothing. You're just like purple. <laughs> I like I see the bin of clothes and I'm like nice and I'm grabbing them, looking at it like no, nah, that's too big. No, that's the wrong color. No, I don't like that way. That looks like it fits. And just like throwing clothes everywhere. Because I have no idea how to deal with actual. Because <laughs> I have no experience with it. Absolutely none. So, uh, after you've like. And, and the two adults are just too. What's the phrase I want to use here? Uh, they feel too bad to tell you to stop. So, after you've thrown everything everywhere and you finally. Not find... everything. I throw like maybe. Four shirts, and then the fifth one I pick up. I was I was being mildly hyperbolic, but sure. After you've thrown yeah. some stuff places, I pick up a shirt that is, let's be real, is entirely too expensive for what I'm looking for. But it looks amazing. It's like a purple shirt, uh -huh. like a nice purple tunic that looks like it it'll fit me, but maybe a little big, so I can run to uh -huh. it with like um like a black trim. Around the sleeves and around the, the hem of the box. Yeah, okay. Um, and I'm, I just hold it up and go, I'll take it! So, can I, so can I say you, like, hold it up and then you put it on and you, like, strike a pose, maybe? What pose do you want to strike here? Um, hands on my hips, chin up, looking, like, at the ceiling. Mm -hmm. And I go to cast the lights to dance around me to make me... <laughs> but in the back of my head, I just hear, don't do it. So I don't. And you're also, you got this really, really nice shirt, and then your pants are utter rags. Oh, yeah, they're just, my pants are still destroyed. Roll a performance check. Ah, oh, balls. Great. What you five. Got? You got a five? I rolled a two plus three. Oh, my gosh. Um, you you become aware that, like, Sarah and Steve, Steven are, like, whispering to each other, and then looking over at you, and, like, and, uh, you... D then they sort of split apart. Perception check for me. Oof. Great. Um, 11. You haven't noticed anything, but Sarah goes, you can have it, Mel. How much does it cost? Um, you got I like... may be new, but I know that much that things cost money. <laughs> That's true. That's you why got... my parents never bought me anything. You got two gold? Um, well, I still need pants, too. Tell you what, three gold and those pants, and she points to, like, some pretty generic baseline pants that would go color-wise with your outfit, but are not nearly as fancy as your shirt. Um, you can have that shirt and that outfit there, which is, like, a general gray sort of beige tunic, like, pants and tunic thing, uh, for three gold. What do you say? That works. Um, do you have, like... Any new belts? Cause, and I'm gonna like lift up the shirt a little bit and be like, and it's just like a rope with pouches tied to it. <laughs> I need some. I need. I need some help. Oh, I have plenty of that back at the house, Malcourt. I uh, I can take care of that for you. Stephen says as he just. Uh, no, you. You gave me food. I don't want to take more of your stuff. Well, that's all right. I I have a farm. I got I got plenty of stuff all over, all around. Before, like I'm gonna take off my little coin pouch. And like open it up and be, and just show it to them and be like, look, I got this. Let me buy myself some stuff. 
All right, and so she sort of looks at you for a second and goes, well, if you insist, and, like, all that other stuff, pretty generic, it only costs you, like, I don't know, 10 silver or something, I feel like. 10, is 10 so, silver or gold? 10 um, silver. Oh, never mind. It's, it would be, like, 5 silver. All right, cool. So, 3 gold, 5 silver? Yeah. You're getting yourself the we feel bad for the child discount. Hell yeah. <laughs> you would have had to roll, uh, like, a natural one to not have any discount at all. Same cool, don't worry. I rolled anyway, and it was a natural 18. <laughs> well, whatever. Well, I mean, when you rolled your, like, five or whatever it was. Oh, the performance check? I rolled a natural two. Oh, man. Cool. So, I, um... And then... Ooh, um... So... On my little like crap, I'm gonna I'm gonna pull my little crappy bag out mm -hmm. and pull a bent stick out and be like, "Do you have any string?" Yeah, of course. And she just points back to the counter, and you can see there's like all kinds of string. She's got a string section. Do you have any string for bows, specifically? Oh, oh, for but yeah. So, um, that's a little bit out of your price range i think how, how much gold do you have she sort of looks at you i'm gonna like pull out my pouch off my new belt look at it and be like enough he raises an eyebrow well, at you well how much is it well bow itself how much is a bow hang on oh i don't need the bow i just need the string no i'm talking to myself i know there's the table is in here somewhere that's the monster manual. Why do I keep doing that? Short bow is a, just a normal... Uh, is, how much is the regular bow? So like a long bow? Yeah. Weapons, a long bow. Page 146. Long bow is 50 gold. 50 gold. So that's the string, which is kind of what makes the bow? Would probably be at least 10, wouldn't I feel like. I don't know. It's up to you. I mean, it's going to be 10 gold. That's what I'm going to say it is. Cool. So it's a stringless longbow. Yeah, sure. Cool. I'm going to be like, cool. So 10 gold, and I'm going to have 10 gold. How much gold do you have? After that, and now I have a long. I have no. <laughs> uh, I have 107 gold pieces, five silver. Where did you get all that? Um, I found I found some in the uh, the general's tent. Um, I found some someplace else in the army camp, and then I just had some from you know being Melkor. Oh, yeah, and I didn't destroy all being your Mel gold in the beginning, right? Correct. Gotcha. So when you pay her, like she notices that your gold is like. It's all dent and it's, jacked it's, up. It's just jacked up, but she's not going to question that at this point. Um, Neither am I. <laughs> and so you get your bow string. Ah! Can you help me string this? I don't know how. <laughs> Steven laughs and, and like leads you back outside and turns to Sarah and says, Thanks so much. And like uh, he sort of like does a shoulder thing where he's like, I don't know what to do with this kid, but I'm just trying my best here. Thanks for the candy!